Island Hunter getting a lead in behind the others. Walking in slowly, flags uh, not yet raised. 21 of them all heading in the right direction at present. And now Robbie Sutton is ready for them. The flags are raised for the Ultima. And they're off, away first time. The Ultima handicap chase, three miles in the furlong, heading to the first of 20. Twig, maroon cap is handy, with the nose band at Chianti Classico, famous bridge up between them. We've all been caught down at the running rail rising uh, for the first time. At the other end of the field, Shambar is the early back mark, and stable mate Victorino is just in front of him. Quickly to the second. And down at the second, and a very bad mistake in doing so, and he eventually departs, is Trelaw. Trelaw has gone at the second, as the rest now heads up the hill towards the third. So one of the market leaders, Trelaw, out of the race at the second, and as they go on the incline and for the first time, the Grey Highland Hunter has moved through with a cloud of rear. Chianti Classico, and Twig is up there. We've all been caught down at the running rail to Lord Dominion in a purple and yellow jacket and famous bridge of Manella Crooner and the grey El Dorado Allen. Stumptown in the dark green is in mid division with Meeting of the Waters, the Hoops, the White Cap further back alongside Bustleton to run Wild Fred and Kitty's Light and Monbeck Genius and the crooner, a Highland Hunter made quite a serious mistake at the first going down the far side and a very bad mistake by Monbeck Genius has knocked him right back through the field. He's just been passed by Victorino and Jevre. Shambar remains last of the field as they come to the water and Ecladeria hopped over in front. Monbeck Genius at the water was much better and still last of the field is Shambar as they continue to head on off the far side for the first time and move on to the first of the ditches. Big leap on that occasion from the Grey Highland Hunter alongside Eclada Rear. They're the leading pair to Twig with Maroon Cap, Lord de Manil in the cheek pieces. In turn being followed through by the Orbin Court and Famous Bridge and then Chianti Classico in the nose bound to a pair of greys. Uh, El Dorado, Alan Excelsis, meeting of the waters in midfield as they race across the top of the hill first time to Kitty's Light with the red sleeves. And then Stumptown and Manila Crooner in the black and white who's out wide from the Goffer and Chevre and Run Wild Fred to Monbeck Genius and Bustleton and Victorino and Shambar last of all as they take the open ditch at the top of the hill. Lord and Neil got in a little bit close to it. So it's a cloud area and the Grey Highland Hunter who will lead them on the descent a first time. They make their way on towards the ninth in the ultimate. Leading duo move on by a couple of lengths to Twig, who's just shared in third. We've all been caught against the running rail, disputing fourth with Lord de Manil and then Chianti Classico in the sheepskin noseband. Just in advance of Famous Bridge, the white cap, the grey El Dorado Allen yellow jacket, the other grey Excelsis red cap just behind the leading cluster. He's followed out wide by Manella Crooner. Meeting of the water still waited with early on from Kitty's Light as they rise out the ninth. Uh, the leading pair were pretty assured. Still at the back of the field, Shambar. Bustleton has only got Shambar behind. Victorino is immediately in front of that pair. And after that fairly serious error early on, Monbeck Genius is in the last group of four. And he's just in behind Gevre, who's in the purple and white. So about to take the turn, which brings them to the end of a circuit in the ultimate. They move on towards fences 10 and 11. Eclada Rio, the light blue cap, alongside Highland Hunter. From Twig and Lord de Vanille, and we've all been caught in Chianti Classico. And then Famous Bridge and Old El Dorado Allen from Excelsis and Manila Cruna. A meeting of the Water and Kitty's Light. And then Run Wild Fred and the Maroon Jiggins Town Soaps from the Goffer and Gevray. Stump Town's being bustled along. He's lost a bit of ground, dark green and yellow. Uh, he's in the last group of four or five in company with Monbeck Genius who gets a reminder. Victorino and Shambar have made a little headway and Bustleton is being pushed along last of all as they meet rising ground once again and head on towards the 12th. Highland Hunter and Ecladeria are still the leading duo. Over Twig and Chianti Classico, third and fourth. Then Lord de Manil and Famous Bridge jumping up past. We've all been caught down at the running rail. Excelsis is just in behind that group. Followed further back by El Dorado Allen from Meeting of the Waters, Manila Crooner, Kitty's Light. Monbeck Genius, the Goffer, Run Wild Fred, Shambar. Further back to Gevre and then Victorino. And then back to Stump Town as they come to the first to heading away from the stands on the descent. Bustleton has been pulled up. He's out of the race. He didn't jump the 13th. The rest are already pressing on uh, towards the water. 
and it's Highland Hunter over Ecladeria, Twig, Chianti Classico, Red Cap very close fourth, ahead of Famous Bridge and Lord Dominion and we've all been caught at Excelsis, Minella Crooner, Meeting of the Waters is beginning to inch a little bit closer now, McManus Hoops, White Cap for Mark Walsh as they take the open ditch, Highland Hunter still running a big race in front, Minella Crooner made a bad mistake at that one, uh, we've all been caught, was a little bit awkward as well, uh, Run Wild Fred is being bustled along, Montbet Genius is struggling, Gevray is struggling and Highland Hunter can continues to lead the ultimate field. Chianti Classico has travelled up strongly into second ahead of Twig. Then Eclada rear relegated his speed fourth with Famous Bridge. Still, meeting of the waters is getting closer. He's up to dispute sixth place now with We've All Been Caught as they come to the open ditch at the top of the hill. Highland Hunter and Chianti Classico, the leading pair over it. To Twig, Famous Bridge is close up in fourth. Meeting of the Waters is going five. Then comes Eclada Rear. Monbeg Genius has been pulled up at the top of the hill. Excelsis is another who's being pulled up. El Dorado Allen looks like pulling up. Stump Town is tail off and they're freewheeling on down. Uh, the long run now and it's Highland Hunter over Chianti Classico. Famous Bridge, White Sleeves and Cap riding behind them. Running a big race for Nicky Richards and the team. Twig is bang there. The Maroon Cap for Bo Morgan. Meeting of the Waters in behind them. The Gopher in the blue and red is making progress and then Shambar three out Chianti Classico took over there from Highland Hunter Twig famous bridge still meeting of the waters is getting closer and the goffer covers his move and they are moving menacingly on the heels of the leaders as they begin the swing back towards home they've got two left to jump in the Ultima Chianti Classico Twig meeting of the waters the white cap the goffer in the blue and red famous bridge is hanging on in there in fifth but this group of five are clear as they face the second last nose bounded Chianti Classico Twig here's meeting of the waters on the left then famous bridge over in fourth the goffer can't muster anymore Chianti Classico game in front at the final fence jumps it well overball pitched on landing landed four lengths ahead though Twig is chasing meeting of the waters now one place back in third Chianti Classico getting a bit lonely halfway up the running been grinding this air for King Daly Chianti Classico and David Bass full ball and a great zone Chianti Classico he wins the Altima over Twig and meeting of the waters clear of famous group then the Goffa we've all been caught pitches like and Shambar the last to finish I, mean, I spent the first part of the race wanting to see whether Trelawne was okay um, and, uh, and then I looked back and I saw Trelawne he had to make a mistake. I thought, oh no, David's getting too brave. But he jumped for fun. Yeah. He was cantering down the hill, wasn't he? He, he really was. Yeah. He really enjoyed himself today. Yeah, David's been confident the whole way through, so he was right. <laughs> <laughs> it wasn't a tricky decision for him at all between no, the two. No, he absolutely adamant from day one. And what was the, what was the key to it? I'll ask him ask him himself in a you moment. But what did he say he to might you? Might say something completely different to me. But <laughs> <laughs> no, he was. I mean, he adores the horse. And he says he's a complete terrier, and he's gone and done that today like a terrier. He's, a, you know, he's he's as hard as nails. He's not very big, but he's got so much ability and so much, so agile. Always has been. Now I know these ground, this ground is your kind of conditions, you know, 1995 kind of conditions. But was it? Were you worried about it? Because no, I, I, I watched the first two races, and I thought that was ground was nothing like as bad as they thought they were going through it. Um, and when Aidan Murphy and I bought him, we always said we'd bring him here, and I never thought it'd ever happen. <laughs> <laughs> and that's the second win in the autumn as well, following Betty's yeah, boy back yeah, in 1999. Yeah, Happy-go-lucky got close. Yeah, we've been we've been knocking at the door for a while, so it was great for everybody. We've got it today, so uh, brilliant. What will it mean for the team at home? Oh, huge! I mean, come on, let's having a run at Cheltenham. That's all it's all about. So, uh, um, and the, you know, the owners are big supporters of racing. You know, Francis Brook is um, the Queen's King's representative at Ascot, so. Uh, you know, they're a big, big steeple of, of, of history in the race, which is great for them. Have you got thoughts on what this horse can now go on to do? No, not yet. <laughs> Just here. No, this has been the plan for a long time. And after, after he ran second at Kempton, we hummed and hard about the racing post. And they always said to me, no, Cheltenham is what we bought it for, Cheltenham is where we go. And so we trained him for today. How are you feeling? Um, <laughs> oh, it's, yeah, it's an amazing feeling. Um, I will be honest, I... Uh, I made the decision pretty quickly to ride him and then the rain came and yesterday and this morning I was starting to doubt my decision um, and I hope Trelawne's alright, I didn't realise he fell, I hope he's alright because he's a very good horse um, and yeah and I hope for his connections that he's okay and we can go again next year because he's got so much ability um, but I, I was yeah I thought I'd made the right decision and then 
after I jumped a few, I was, I was confident because he just, he's so straightforward and he loves jumping. Um, and it was just a case of trying not to get there too soon, which I didn't manage to do anyway. <laughs> Is that what you were saying in your head? <clears throat> yeah, and I, Paddy was also in front of me and I sort of went past him and he sort of said, go on, and I was like, I need to try and fill up, you know, and I managed to get to the front and just get breathing into him um, and then just get over the last two. And he, he had a little peck at the last, but he picked up well and... Um, I think he's won quite well in the end. He's a progressive horse, so exciting. Yeah, he's young, progressive, exciting. He can go on from this. Yeah, I mean, I, I'll be honest, halfway around, I was thinking about about um, Liverpool next year. <laughs> um, he reminds me of the last Samurai. He's not very big, but he's he's on springs when he jumps, and he loves jumping. Um, so he does remind me of the last Samurai, but, uh, yeah, I... I I'd love to have a go at that race, but we'll see, we'll see what happens between now and then. Tell us about the professional partnership that you have with David Bass. Um, well, I'm not sure it's that special. We've been trying to get rid of him for ages. <laughs> <laughs> We've got nothing in common. Uh, Is that uh, true? Uh, well, I don't think so. I'm not a vegan anyway. <laughs> <laughs> um, but it no, works, though, it, clearly. It works very well. He's been, he's been a huge supporter of the RFA. We've He's been together for 11 years now, so uh, um, he's a do-or-die pilot. Um, I was caught, he's quite reserved today, so uh, yeah, no, Sorry, brilliant. Tell us something about your professional relationship with Kim Bailey, because when I was asking him about it, he said, we've got nothing in common. Is that true? Yeah. Um, <laughs> <laughs> one of the owners said to me on the way in, said that I, I love a toff. Um, <laughs> yeah, I would say there's, well, there's probably a lot of differences between me and a lot, lots of people that I work with and work, and work for, but um, we put them to one side and somehow between Kim and, and the rest of the team and, and Matt, the assistant, we, we we try and get it right for the big days. And like, although we've been quiet numbers-wise this season, it's been really frustrating. Um, you know, first flow won and does he know won a big handicap. And we just, <clears throat> I've never lost faith in the team to get a, a good horse ready for the big day. And you must under, understand each other after all of this time together. And Kim, presumably, you know, he, he's straight, isn't he? You know, you, you, you know what you're getting. Yeah, I, that's maybe why it works. Um, we're very honest with each other. Uh, and we sort of, yeah, he leads me to it now. And, yeah, we just leave each other to get on with it. And maybe that's why it works. Your first success since 2020. What's it like to be back in the winner's enclosure? Yeah, brilliant. Um, it's been too long. That feeling's the best feeling. Uh, honestly, riding horses here is, is a privilege. Good horses here is a privilege. Um, but I know how hard it is to win here. Uh, I probably should have ridden. I should have ridden more festival winners than I did. I, I probably should have ridden a couple of winners for Nicky Henson when I was a claimer back at, back quite a few years ago now. And it took me too long to get one on the board. But um, I know how hard it is to win here. So. I really uh, appreciate it. You still think about those? Yeah, yeah. I, I think I should have ridden a couple for for Nicky, but um, but that's gone. I'm hopefully a different and better jockey now. Watch live racing now on RacingTV.com. <laughs>